Hello everyone, Cinter here with more Let's Make a Game Astral Collision. And today I have several things to go over, one of which will be clear on this left side if you're paying attention. Uh, first of all, I've renamed this to Kendra. Now one of the things, let's go ahead and hit this button. One of the things that uh, RPG Maker doesn't have is folders for world sections. So you can make uh, inset things, kind of like this, where the world, though, connects to Kendra, and then, or like the northern village right here. This is a really a better example. The northern village, and then inside of it are all of the various outposts that belong to the northern village. Uh, speaking of which, I have finished fleshing out all of those. So before I had the smokehouse, which has a bunch of roast pigs in it, because I didn't have a better sprite in the options that I could see, or representing a smokehouse, uh, and the trading post, which has this in and a dude that will sell you stuff. So I've added a couple of locations. Uh, none of them are populated especially yet, but there's the guild house because one of the things that's an important lore point about Kendra is it has a thriving adventurer's guild. So it makes sense to have a guild house here. Uh, this is going to have a couple of NPCs that are going to be standard in these sorts of outposts, as well as this for... I basically want to have some sort of notification information here uh, on this note thing. Um, then there's a warehouse. There's not anything here yet. Then there's hunters, their house, an herbalist house, and a carver's house. Uh, so this is somebody that you can like buy wood from. It'll probably be a crafting station of some kind. And then we have the capital city of Kendra, which is over here. So this area right here, uh, I'm doing a terrible job of mousing over it, but you get the idea. If I go to regions, it's this nice 10 by uh, 10 ID block. Uh, let's go off of that now. So that's the capital city. Again, I'm making a folder out of it because what I'm doing is I'm not making, whoops, uh, Worldo. I'm not making one map to encompass this entire space. I'm making nine. I'm breaking it into grid sections. Here, 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 and here. So we have the upper left, which is currently empty. The upper middle, which is currently empty. I mean, there's a lot of uh, stuff going into filling these things out. So if I go into the details here, I had to specify the size and its locale. Not a huge amount of like effort or anything, but when you're making a bunch of them, you're naming everything, it takes a little while. How to figure out what each of these things is for us, too. So this is the Royal District, uh, for example. This is the uh, North Gate, things like that. Uh, so most of these are empty. I've started filling it in on the bottom, however. So the lower left. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that the center uh, is 30 by 30. Because my general philosophy that I'm going to be working with here in this is that... Um, the world, like each tile represents a 30 by 30 grid space if I were to zoom in. So if you look at the Northern Village, for example, this grid is 30 by 30. Um, so that's how I'm handling that. But what you'll notice is that if we go to one of these, for example, it is 45 by 45, which is frankly bigger than that. The reason for that is this area, actually let me zoom out a bit. This area from here to here is should be, if I've done my math correctly, 30 by 30. And then this area is the extra 15 outside of that. Uh, so 0 to 14, uh, for example. What's going on with that, uh, and I've done that part, the middle part, which is only 30 wide because it doesn't need to represent as much width, and then the right. Uh, and I'm going to be filling these in with stuff later. They're... I'm getting the generic uh, bones of it in, as it were. So if we go back to the world uh, and we come back in here, this part, I want to I want to represent the wall, but the wall is outside of this, this tile, right? So this is where the extra 15 comes from. The extra 15 spaces that I'm putting are going to be for the wall. So that's what's going on there. So I've started filling that out. Um, so that's map stuff that I have done. Other things include a few more skills here and there. Uh, so I've, for example, added steel fists, which does 
damage. It can critical hit for uh, more damage off of the earth and fire part. Earth plus fire is metal. Uh, so this is that deals metal damage. Um, staggering strike. So I added a couple of states. We'll go over those in a second. This is a an attack that does stagger. Uh, antidote. This cures a poison and heals some HP. This is the exact same as in the antidote item. Uh, let's see. Rejuvenating air. So this is a healing spell that heals all allies and applies rejuvenation to them. Uh, cursed earth applies curse and poison. That's what it does. Uh, washing waters removes conditions. So it heals an ally for an amount, and here's a condition, and if a condition is cured, then the double, the healing amount is doubled. Here's how that works. Um, flaming Strike is just a fire attack. Pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah. Resonant Healing is... I don't remember if this was here last time or not. Uh, but it heals for an amount and then an additional... Basically, it heals for the average of your water, wind, fire, and earth stats, and then an additional copy of that for each condition and aura on the targeted uh, ally. Um, so I got... Basically, what I did is, if we go over to our spreadsheet, um, I made sure that everyone had their up to level 10 sort of skills filled out uh, so that's kind of what's been going on there and then uh, I've added an antidote item so right here antidote one of the things I was discovering through my playtesting is that especially some of these early enemies you get poisoned a lot it's, just, it's a thing that happens a lot and Omnicure Root is very good at getting rid of everything but it's also kind of overkill because it gets rid of everything and is priced for getting rid of everything so antidote is a much cheaper item that heals you for a little bit and always removes poison that's its job it, it cures you of poison and restores a little bit of hp so that's uh an item that i added and then one of the big things um that i've been working on so i added this state right here stagger uh stagger blocks the next action cannot move you see uh and then it also means you it dramatically decreases your ability to evade uh everything uh which is an important part of it but note that if you get multiple actions uh it will stop one of them but not all of them so this is a very short sort of effect um that's its purpose but then i also went through and i blended the second set of conditions so if i double click on this i took these and i blended them with these uh some of them might be a little loud but whatever we're we're rolling with it here um because otherwise i just had a bunch of wasted icons and i want to do something with them now you'll notice this says type enchantment uh so i have conditions which are things like poison and blind and i have auras which are things like lightning reflexes and steel skin uh and there's a couple others dodge is nothing in particular but honed weapon is an aura this is an aura uh, that's not a special thing, though. Um, so, there are... Uh, these should probably become auras. But anyway, my point is, there are auras. Uh, and there's conditions. So, I'm adding something that I'm calling enchantments. And the idea of an enchantment, some of these are filled in, is that it is... A mixed bag. Um, there's something that you might want to apply to the enemy, you might want to apply to yourself. They are not automatically like they come with pros and cons so here's an example burning gaze it gives you seven percent hp degeneration uh ten percent mp degeneration but ten percent tp uh regeneration and it means that your attacks will basically always inflict burning gaze if your attacks can inflict the attack state they probably will because you have a thousand percent chance of doing so so what this means is that if you have burning gaze on you, you attack an enemy, they will be inflicted with burning gaze as well. Uh, and it will just keep spreading. This means it's it's a mixed bag. You don't necessarily want it on you. It makes you more effective at being aggressive because it 
it refills your TP, but you don't necessarily really want this on you. On the other hand, if it is on you, well, then you can spread it to other people and they start sharing in the uh, joys of burning gaze. So this is an interesting condition that kind of spreads. Inspired a little bit by uh, the Pokemon ability Mummy, I think it is, that just like replaces the ability with a copy of itself when you deal damage. Uh, and so that's what this is. But they're not all going to be kind of like that. I've Basically, I've filled in placeholders for all of them. Uh, but Fragilis Speed is the only other one that actually has anything. We'll go over it in just a second. Fragilis Speed right here, um, it theoretically, I've done this correctly, but it makes you significantly faster, but also take double damage. So, you know, does taking double damage for speed sound really good? I don't know. Uh, it has a chance to be removed by damage. So this concept is one that took me a little while to arrive at, uh, and... I'm going to slowly be filling these out, but there's a couple of reasons why I wanted this. One of them is I wanted to make use of those icon spaces. I want more states. More states give me more options of things to do. Um, and I kind of wanted more conditions, but I also kind of wanted more auras. And this is a nice way to be able to kind of sit right in the middle of those where it's a trade-off, right? If you have this on you, it's a trade-off. The other really notable thing about this is if I go to the code right here and scroll up a bit, you'll notice uh, wherever it is that I have these. Where do I have these? I should figure out how this function works, but I'll look into that later. Right here. Regenerate HP, regenerate MP. These have caps. You'll notice they have a, gap, a cap of 25% of your max. As it stood with the way that the game was set up, that wasn't really relevant. Technically, it would mean that putting on things like Rejuvenation and a Healing Potion don't increase your HP gain above a quarter. Um, but realistically speaking, something like Poison, like I can't hit your DGen cap, right? You have Poison and that's the only thing that makes you lose uh, HP. So... I wanted to be able to uh, influence the... Um, yeah, steel skin makes you slower. I wanted to be able to influence your... I mean, technically, these can give you more HP regen as well. But I wanted to be able to have things that could add up to hitting the cap, where the cap matters, if that makes sense. And the reason why that is important to me is because I think that the ability to hit the cap... Uh, does things to how you play and what sort of things are good. So um, this is something... So the the idea of having the cap there is something that Guild Wars does. Um, Guild Wars 1. And there's the cap on HP regen and degen of 10 pips in either direction. And that means that once you get enough pips, uh, you can squelch the effectiveness of pips in the other direction. So if I had like 30 pips of HP regeneration, only 10 of those would actually be healing me. The remaining 20 aren't doing anything, but if somebody applied HP degeneration to me, it still wouldn't do anything either. Like, it's canceling out pips that don't do anything, which means that raw effects that go around the, the uh, pip system, uh, like direct healing and stuff like that, are powerful in response to that way that cap works. And I want to be able to uh, mimic that bit of design functionality because I really like it and I like what it does. Uh, I mean, this is a personal preference thing, right? It's a subjective thing. But that meant that I wanted more sources of HP degeneration. And so I'm going to be able to add them through these enchantments. So that's, I think, most of what's been going on. Honestly, there's a, like, going through some of the stuff. It's just a, a lot of easy, but like time, like it eats up some time as you just go through it sort of stuff. So I'm happy with progress that's been made though. So that's kind of where things are, I think. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. There's nothing really that new to show gameplay wise. So no play example, um, but Hopefully, pretty soon, we'll have a capital city to explore. I should add, actually, before I leave, that one of the things that pushes me towards doing this, and we'll get into this more when I actually have city to show off, is this tower right here. Um, and again, we'll talk about this more uh, as I kind of build stuff. 
but certain effects because of the way the tile sets work are very difficult to do. So something like a gate is a prime example. I can put a gate object on the outside of this that the player can walk up into and then be popped out the other side, but it's really difficult to represent a gate from the other side. You kind of have to either assume it's there or you kind of have to like create some other way of indicating something. So it's not in these tile sets, but if I go up into the tile sets here, right here, and I go to dungeon, you'll notice on this tab, I mean, it's hard to see, but there are some uh, tiles that are used to indicate like light is shining out from below you that help indicate, oh, this is potentially a direction that you could travel. Uh, that sort of stuff is really useful to be able to have, but it's one of those things where uh, other things that this is bad at, this system is stairs. You can have stairs that go up or down like this, but you can't have it on the other side very effectively um, because the stairs always look like they're going up. And I mean, you can see the stairs right over here, right? They always look like they're going up in a specific direction. This is why I think, um, like if you look at the 2D Legend of Zelda games, the dungeons use a different visual style for how they do walls. And that's to enable them to place stuff on left, right, and south uh, walls that a system like this has a difficulty with. So that's something that's going to be complicating things. But one of the other things uh, that's going to be an issue is over here, a lot of this is going to be taken up with that big friggin' tower. Uh, so again, if we go back out to the world here, this is a huge tower and that's going to be a huge uh, center of the guild. And I don't want this like, I don't want to Saffron City this. So if you look at Saffron City in the original uh, Pokemon games, you have these multi-story tall buildings, but they have to be physically represented on that map to have that appearance, and you can't walk underneath them. They're blocking tiles. And I don't want to have that sort of issue with this, so if I break things up, I can have it, well, it peers off the top of this tile, but you don't see it in the next one. And that's a way of trying to compensate for some of the effects of this visual style. There are definitely advantages to this over 3D, but 3D can represent certain things that this has a, a huge time struggling with. Uh, and that's going to be things like those pass under gates, tall towers, and stuff like that. So uh, anyway, that's some considerations that I'm going to be having as I flesh out and, and build this city. So I think that's going to be it for me today for Real Z's. And, uh, and thank you for watching. Until next time, everyone, take care and goodbye.